Hey, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. Want to take you through a little NQ trade that we did and called out in our um, trial futures day trading service that uh, Paul and I are working on in the background as potential for service in the future. But I want to take you through a little NQ trade using the black box breakout indicator. Uh, first, I want to give you a little idea of how I was looking at the day going into November 8th, 2018. Currently trading in the uh, Eastern Time Zone. So my uh, real time, regular time hours open is going to be at 9.30 a.m. But I want to give you a little bit of background uh, as I do usually in the morning before 9.30 of how I look at setting up the day. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go over to uh, a little volume profile setting I have on the flexible grid. And you'll notice a couple of red lines here that I've got set up at 72.32 and 67.19. Now what I typically will do is uh, at the end of a Friday, I will look at setting up a guide, uh, guide post for the expected move for the next week based on the close on Friday. So what I do is I look at the options market, and you can find that um, if you go to the Analyze tab and the Think Back sub tab, and you set the date for, in this case, 11-2, with the following week, Friday being 11-9. On the close of 11.2, the market closed at 69.75.75, and if I look out a week, which is seven days, I'll see the expected move is plus or minus 256.72. And really all I did was uh, I did a quick calculation of adding and subtracting this number from the close on Friday, and I put up a couple of uh, little guidepost lines here. So the expected move is uh, set up by the options market and trading options on futures in this particular case using the NQ Z18, which is the December contract. Um, I'm looking at 68% of the time from this Friday close with these uh, particular volatility numbers and the expected movement range, 68% of the time the NQ by that Friday should close within this barrier. This Friday, uh, sorry, let me go back to the chart. If you look at, uh, we had the election on Tuesday, midterm elections in the U.S., and uh, Wednesday was a big up day, had a big move, big gap, big run. But as you notice, it came right up to the high of the expected move. Going into the next day, and my setup for um, on Thursday, the 8th of November, where we did the trade, I'm looking for either a consolidation, which it turned out this day more or less was, or maybe a slight move down, but I'm not really expecting it to go uh, well outside the expected move. And in this case it didn't, but of course, you know, with you don't know that until the, the days have painted forward uh, what's going to happen. But my bias going into the day was a consolidation after a big move up, uh, a gap below us that eventually probably will get filled, which it ended up doing here on Friday. Uh, or some small move. So I'm not looking for, in my trading day, necessarily big trading moves. Okay, so that's my setup for the day. I'm going to go to my charts, and you'll see this is the November 8th period, and we're coming in at 9 o'clock in the morning up to the U.S. market open. You can see this expected move line here. We actually came up and just about touched it, believe it or not, uh, in the uh, pre-market hours, uh, you know, 11 o'clock at night uh, on Wednesday, uh, 10 or 11 o'clock at night, we can came up here and touched it. But in any event, you can see that the bias coming into the next morning is slightly down. That's kind of what I expected. Uh, maybe a slight pullback, consolidation after a big up move. And you can see as I move forward time here, uh, the U.S. market opened at 9.30. We got a, a initial push down, which broke the overnight range low. So that gives me a confirmation of my bias uh, that I've broken the overnight range low and I'm thinking this is headed in, in the direction that I think it's going to head. And as I start moving forward you can see we start forming um, basically a chop range. This is our uh, dynamic cloud uh, based on an exp exponential moving average but it's basically a, a let's say a bias line above the cloud is long and below the cloud is short for trading decisions that we're making in this signal in the break uh, black box 
breakout indicator is using that information to set up uh, these these signals. We did get a long signal in this chop zone. Uh, it actually did not trigger long and broke the short, uh, broke the stop. So this was an invalid trade at this point. And as we go forward, you can see one of the things that's going on is you're getting um, what I'm looking at is a bit of a consolidation triangle and breakout high or low is going to give me a potential setup uh, for going long or short. You see it's uh, starting to squeeze in this range and as we go forward you'll see we start breaking this to the downside and we get a signal here and this is the trade that I'm, I'm going to talk through a little bit. Uh, we ended up getting a signal on this candle right there at the edge of the screen. So in real time you'd see 71.83 as a stop and 71.67 uh, as an entry to go short. This is a signal that's closed below the cloud and it met all of our conditions for this black box breakout indicator. And I set this trade up and I'll show you I actually tweeted it out in real time. Uh, this is a, a hidden tweet room that Paul and I are using together to trial some of the signals and uh, potential service in the future but I did tr tweet this trade out um, in real time 71.83 and 71.67 and as you can see as time goes on we ended up getting a trigger here at this point and usually when I'm trading on a five minute chart uh, if I get a trade that triggers I'm going to run to a one minute chart and start managing the trade um, and I'll show you how I manage that going forward here. So I'm going to go to my one minute chart and you can see I'm going to actually show you both side by side. So the trigger came over here and you can see my cursor. These are the lines for the uh, uh, stop loss and entry and it triggered right here which is right same point as my cursor is on the left hand chart right there. So here's my trigger and I'm going to go back to the just this one chart. Maximize the cell. So we're triggered and in the trade here and this is my initial stop loss. And as I go through managing the trade I'm starting to see you know we've got a nice downtrending move uh, coming up here. And I'll just throw a little trend line in to show that. And we're right about here in the trade triggered. It's coming up and it's touching this trend line. It hasn't broken it. And we can see we're starting to now push lower, push lower and push lower. And as time goes on, um, a little bit into the trade, at this point I tweeted out uh, movement of the stop loss to 7180. I just brought it down a little bit here uh, to meet up with this little pivot that came up. Brought it down. Once we had the big push down, I'm going to start getting a lot more aggressive uh, in moving my stop because in my mind, in, in my mind, really what I'm trying to do is scalp, you know, five, ten points, that kind of thing, out of the trade. So I'm going to manage it pretty aggressively uh, with what's going on here. And as time went on, you can see that we had a big push down. We start to get a little bit of consolidation in this area here. We got a, another push down. The volume is starting to drop off on my down move. Uh, and I'm going to start managing this trade on a one minute time frame quite a bit more tightly. You see what I call the equal and opposite uh, move here in a one minute candle. We got a big move down and an immediate move up in the next one minute candle. And when that happened, at, at the open of this candle, I move this stop down to 71.64. I'm going to start trailing a few candles behind this big push down. When I saw this move back up, I started managing a lot more aggressively. Uh, my stop. So I moved it to the top of this candle here and when this bar closed I saw a little bit another uh, another move down I'm starting to see the volume drop off a little bit and then we start getting some uh, up volume and I see this candle coming up and what I ended up doing was tweeting out changing the stop to just a little bit above this particular candle here. So this was an accumulation candle a drop, an accumulation, a drop an accumulation and I'm feeling like uh, the tanker that's moving in a direction is starting to get uh, movement against it as we start getting more and more signals going back up. So you can see here that I tweeted out uh, moving this stop to 71.51.75 uh, 
which is this particular red line here and I tweeted that out just uh, as this candle here started coming up uh, and closed and then we got when this candle closed this beginning of this red line is where I moved the stop to just above this candle here and then as this candle opened it came down a little bit and then shot back up and took my stop out so we ended up taking that that trade for uh, 61 ticks which on the NQ is about three hundred and five dollars in a nice little trade uh, meeting a couple of extra conditions that I had uh, in looking up the setup of the morning uh, watching a consolidation period a break a setup that came from um, our signals here 7167 to 83 and we got a nice down move and you'll notice as this ended up uh, you know an accumulation candle here and we started moving back up as it looked like it was doing on the one minute we actually made significant move up you know a big down a big up uh, candle and would have taken our stop out if we would have left it up here and would have had you know really no gain on the trade so uh, tight management on a relatively small scalping type trade uh, that worked out very nicely for a three hundred and five dollar uh, win on the 8th of November 2018 and the use of our black box breakout indicator on futures. Happy trading folks. Take care.